Welcome to the Master's House. We got a title. We got a title today. It's not just not just on a whim. It's actually got a title. It's called Denying the Power. Denying the Power. Uh, yeah, you guys know what uh, the definition of power is according to the Bible? A couple, couple actually different uh, when it uses the word power. A couple different ones. Uh, this power that I'm uh, going to tell you about right now, the one where it says, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Amen? You guys know what I'm talking about? So, you guys know the power I'm talking about here. Am I, am I speaking to somebody that doesn't know what I'm talking about? Well, if I am, hoping I'm going to fill you in just a little bit of that great power. So what is, uh, what is power? Uh, I'm not going to pronounce the Greek word that's used here. Uh, miraculous power. A miracle itself. Ability. Abundance. Uh, might. Mightily. Mighty deed. Worker of a miracle. Power, strength, violence. Mighty, wonderful work, works. Strength, power, ability, inherent power. And then check these out. Power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature or which a per- person inherits or exerts or puts forth. This is the power of the Holy Ghost. Something that you put forth. Uh, power of performing miracles. Moral power or an excellence of soul. The power and influence with which belongs to riches and wealth. Power and resources arising from numbers. Power consisting in or resting upon armies. Or forces or hosts. Isn't that amazing? That... Uh, the power of the Holy Ghost, which we're all pretty familiar with, has maybe a lot more power than what we think or what we allow it to have. You have that miraculous power by the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Miraculous power. Power like you were, it was a great, big, mighty army, that kind of power. That's the kind of power you got. Are you guys with me? Yeah, am, I, am I speaking wrong here? There's power. There's power here. And who had all power? Jesus is always the answer. Jesus had all power. Oh, here's the great thing. He dwelt with them, right? And soon, that power was going to be in them, right? Amen? Amen. That power, the greatest power ever walked in a bodily form on this world has now been expressed through the outpouring of the Holy Ghost and is dwelling inside individuals. That kind of power. That kind of power. Be with me here. There's a lot of power. A lot of things could happen even right now because how many believe that the Holy Ghost is here? Let's call him Jesus. We know it's the same. But Jesus in action, the Holy Ghost in action, is here in this place, and that kind of power could reside right here, right now. And it could do wonders right here, right now on a Wednesday Bible study. At any place, at any time, wherever that power is, that kind of miracle working power is there. You need a miracle? 
You just need the Holy Ghost to be there. Amen? Amen. Jesus had all power. In 2 Corinthians 12, 9, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I would rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. How many want the power of Christ to rest upon us? All the power of Christ. We, hey, Garrett, I've been coming to church for years and years and years. The Holy Ghost, man, I know about it, taught it. I've heard about it, felt it. How many here felt the Holy Ghost? Felt God's Spirit. Oh, feels so good. I've been coming to church for my whole life. And uh, Holy Ghost, you see the Holy Ghost when I was 10 35 now, so 25 years I've experienced this thing called the Holy Ghost. 25 years. And do you know that I don't know the fullness of what the power that it has and what it could do? When I say it, you know what I'm, ref- I'm referring to Jesus and what Jesus can do. You say, well, <laughs> How can that be? How can that be after 25 years? How can that be? Well, because sometimes, how many ever get a little bit confused? We're around at this altar, and the Holy Ghost is moving, and it's out, the outpouring, and you're feeling good, and, and it's like, well, um, you're searching for a need, searching for a healing, searching for a miracle, and the miracle doesn't happen. And who gets the blame? God gets the blame. Lord, you you didn't do it. Lord, you didn't do it for me. Why is that? Why is that? And then I begin to doubt and I begin to question him. I I begin to question the authority. I I begin to question the power. And then that only leads to more things that God can't do. Because I just keep on doubting and I keep on questioning him. It's a vicious, vicious cycle. And after all those years, maybe I've become accustomed. Accustomed to the outpouring of God's Spirit. And I know it's true. I know it's true because I've seen it. You've seen it. We've witnessed it. Maybe I've been a part of it. Maybe I've been, had a, a bad week, a bad month. And I came to church. I just sat in the back. And the Holy Ghost was moving. The miraculous power of the Holy Ghost was moving. And I didn't participate in it. You know why? Because I don't believe. I don't believe, you know, this message of faith again. Sorry. Guess what? In the quarterly, reading through, guess what the topic was? Faith. So even though I spoke about faith last Wednesday and the Sunday before and pretty much every other time I speak, guess what? It just happened to be this time too. I quit believing. I quit believing in the power of the Holy Ghost. I quit, I've I've gotten accustomed to what goes on up here. Oh, you know, things are doing and things are moving, and I actually sit back, and I'm not pointing the fingers at anybody, I'm pointing the fingers at myself. I sit back and I hold back, and this is the most holy place. And I I didn't even want to come up to be a part of it, to come up and just all stand around on this altar. And I'm talking about the outpouring of the Holy Ghost here, but there's, I know there's some Holy Ghost movement at your home. At least there should be at some point during the week. Man, I, I, I held back because I've, I've gotten accustomed to it. I've taken it for granted. I just, uh, maybe next week, maybe next Sunday. That power to change your life and everybody else's life and it will be the essence of the last day revival happens every Sunday about 1230, the Lord willing. And 
about 11.30 when God starts moving at that first song. It starts moving. There's a lot of power to change your life right there, right then, when you connect with the Holy Ghost. Do you still believe it? Do you still believe that's true? Complacency is one of the biggest enemies of faith. Well, how can I? I got faith. Faith without works is what? Is dead. If I'm complacent and I'm sitting back and I'm comfortable and I'm becoming complacent and not feeling the urge of what God does and the way God is moving, all, all of a sudden now, I'm not having any works in my faith. I'm not reaching my faith out to say, you know what? If I would connect with that Holy Ghost, man, man, I, it could change me right now. I think, oh, I've, I've done it for years. And I walked away and nothing changed. At least that we could see with the naked eye. But that's the, that's the lie of the devil. Nothing changed. Nothing changed. Are you still believing? Are you still, when you walk out these doors, you still trusting in that power? Amen? Amen. Uh, 2 Timothy 3, verse 1 through 5. And <clears throat> we read these, actually, the young adults. And so some young adults that were there, you, you guys would know them. Uh, and uh, so I got stuck with, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, with this last one here, but uh, we'll read it all. <clears throat> Sorry, that, uh, that cough, mm, it's bad. It's a good thing I didn't speak the other Sunday because I would have broke out into some of the most terrible coughing, and there's no stopping it. You just keep coughing for 10 minutes, and you just, you can't do nothing about it. Can't drink it, can't drink water, can't do nothing. Anyways, 2 Timothy 3. This know also that in last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. And this one right here. Take note, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. So in young adults, Brother Thomas, each one, each one of us took uh, one of these uh, topics here, the last day, uh, perilous times and all these different things. And so I got this last one here, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And, uh, and we, we shared this like a couple weeks ago. But when I read this and started studying, I was, man, I was convicted. I was like, oh, Lord, let, help me. Touch my faith. Lord, you think, well, Garrett, this isn't about us having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. That's not about this group. That's, that's not, man, how could you think that? How could you think that? And I said, one thing I never want to be called is a hypocrite. Oh, that would be, that would be the worst. I strive my uttermost best so that way I'm not a hypocrite because that is just like the worst thing in the whole wide world, to be a hypocrite. To have a form of godliness, to show up to church, to try and, and live what... I would think, as my human self would think, would be a godly way. But then, deny the fact that there is a power that could actually mortify the deeds of my body, that, or it could help me mortify the deeds of my body, could provide a way of escape from temptation, and actually change my sinful way. But instead, I'd say, hey, this is who I am. I am this sinful, wretched man. And uh, 
I'm not going to change. I, I don't think there's anything that can change me and make me better, a better Christian. There's nothing that can change me. And uh, I thought, man, I could get myself into a place after coming to church for 25 years and I can have a form of godliness. But I can be so accustomed to the move of God's spirit that I don't believe that the power, it could change me because it hasn't changed me in 25 years. You see what I'm saying? See where I'm going right there? I quit believing in the power. I quit believing that there is a force out there that could change me and make me the best individual you guys have ever seen. You take away all my flaws. And give me the strength and the, the power to overcome. I can be changed. How many here think they still can be changed? How many here think they could still be better? You think, well, I've asked God to make me better a million times. Do you still believe in the power? What, what was that power that Jesus had? Man, he healed the sick, he he raised the dead. He did all kinds of miraculous things. He spoke right to the heart, to the dividing of the heart and the soul. Spoke right to it. That's the kind of power that's right here. And we experience it, man, every Sunday. And then every other day in between that we gather here. And it's going to be essential to the last day revival. They're, they done took out the name of Jesus, right? Can't say name of Jesus anywhere. They're doing the best. You can't even say God anywhere, right? And they're going to go after. You know them holy rollers. You know those that are speaking in tongues. You know those baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. You know those kind of people? We got to do away with that. That's the next step. And the thing is, the world, we're all forming to it. We're all like, kind of got this, ah, oh, you know, how many have ever thought this before? Maybe I shouldn't really talk about the Holy Ghost because it kind of makes everybody uncomfortable, you know, because it's just this crazy thing, you know, hands in the air, speaking in an unknown tongue, you know, it's kind of a thing. So I don't really talk about that to my neighbors my friends, because it's just, it's just kind of weird, and I don't want to share that with them and then make them feel uncomfortable. That's the only thing that's going to save their life. That's the only thing that's going to do it. That's the only power that's out there that could help them become better, to follow after God. The only way we're able to follow after God is how? The only way I'm able to become holy is how? How am I able to become holy? It says, I think uh, Brother Corbett read it. Uh, the root is holy. Therefore, the branches are going to be holy. So you've got to be connected with, with God. You've got to be connected with Jesus. He's got to be living inside you. You've got to be a part of that vine. The only way you're part of that vine is you've done repented, baptized in the name of Jesus, filled with the Holy Ghost, and you believe and you're connected to that vine and you become holy. I remember uh, Brother Don talking about, oh man, how, how are we supposed to become holy? Well, the only one that's holy is God. So if you want to try and be holy, I'd get God inside of you. And that holiness will start coming out. But do you still believe that, Lord, I, I better... I better come on down here and get filled with your spirit yet again one more time. And yet again one more time. I better enter into that holy place one more time. And Lord, if so, be it the most, the holy of holies place. Where that intimate fellowship with you. Where I just bathe in your spirit and you commune with me and I with you. Oh, man, I'm taking it for granted. It's just the Holy Ghost. We experience it every Sunday. We experience it 
every Sunday. Well, let's not make excuses for it anymore. Let's not hide it under a rug. Let's not try and pass it off saying, well, you know, it's, it's the Holy Ghost. And when you come around, maybe then you'll understand. But I, I'm not going to worry about, you know, trying to share what the Holy Ghost is and how important it is because it's, it's a little, little much. Oh, man, it's everything. It is everything. Because we all know it's not by might, it's not by power, but it is by His Spirit. It's by His Spirit. Do you still believe? My, I'm, I know, I'm repeating, I've asked you this already, but it's either A, I'm not doing a very good job of coming across and making you believe in the power of the Holy Ghost, or everybody here already believes it 100%. One or the other. So Gary, you're preaching well beyond the choir. You're preaching to an old choir that's done, been there and sung it and sang it and everything else. No, I don't think we're done. That's why. I believe that we're not done. I believe that we still doubt in what this thing does up here. I still believe that we doubt it. Lord, sometimes I doubt you, Lord. I doubt what you could really do in my life. I really doubt the miraculous power. How many want to see those miraculous powers? The manifestations of the last day revival and the manifestations of the works that are going to be wrought by how? By, by, by what? How are they going to be done? By faith. You think, uh, what do you mean? It's going to be done by the Spirit of the Lord. The only way the Spirit of the Lord can do the things it needs to do is if you believe in it. Hey, let me, I'm going to skip right down to the end. Ready? Last scripture. I'll go back. In Matthew 13, 58, and he did not many works because of their unbelief. The one that had all power to do all things and could do anything he wanted to do, he could speak it and things would be done. He could heal any person he walked by just by his shadow and the whole nine yards. That power was prohibited because they didn't believe. Now I want you to think about this. What kind of doubt and disbelief has been hindering the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of Jesus from moving in this place? Well, God's moved many times in this place. What are you talking about, Garrett? He wasn't able to do. Look, right here it says, Matthew, again, Matthew 13, 58, he did not many mighty works. That means he did some, but not very many. He may have done a couple, but not many. How many have seen God do some works? But he, have you seen him do many? Have you seen him just like healing after healing after healing after healing and after healing? And it's just like, what's going on? What in the world is happening? Man, I guess there was a group of people. I guess there was somebody that really believed that they didn't just have a form of godliness. They didn't deny the power thereof. They believed in that power. And God was able to do a work. I may have been prohibiting him this whole time. I and we could have been pro prohibiting him for the works of the last day revival because I don't believe that there's enough power right here. There's not enough power to save all those that would believe. There's not enough power to reach the world in this place. Do you guys believe that? Believe there's not enough? There's not enough... Everything that we need to reach the whole world to save all those that would believe is right here. Right here in this power that we feel every Sunday. It's right there. The power to raise the dead, it's not somewhere off in the distance, unheard of. Oh, it's right here. You think, oh, well, no, 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 there's, there's you know, the other you know, magnifications, there's a greater measure. Jesus had the Spirit without measure, and he couldn't do it. 
because of their disbelief. Chose not to do it, maybe, because of their disbelief. He could do it if he wanted to just get rid of free will and get rid of the act of faith and all that kind of stuff. But he was bound by the faith. All right, let me go back to wherever I stopped. It's all right, I'm almost done anyways. Uh, Mark 16, verse uh, 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In, In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Amen? They shall take up serpents. Amen? Amen. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick sick and they shall recover you know what that doesn't say it doesn't say all those that are gifted with gifts of healing and miracles are going to do these things no it says those that believe are going to do these things we keep thinking oh you know that's the, whoever, whoever's got the gift of miracles man you guys you better step up your game because the last days are coming and we're going to need you to do those miraculous things of you know drinking deadly things and taking up serpents Hey, all you with gifts of healings, you guys you need to step it up. Oh, I'll pray for you. Just let me know. And you guys get those gifts of healings into work because you guys better be practicing. Practice on me, whatever you got to do. I'll take a healing from now and then, you know, whatever. No. If you believe these signs shall follow you because you believe you have the power right here. And no signs will follow. You think, well, why aren't they following well, am I believing the right way? Am I believing 100%? Am I, am I, am I walking back? Am I taking a step back? Am I sitting in the back row? Not to mean that we're talking about Brother Don, but I'm sitting in the back row just, hey, that's the Holy Ghost. You know, that's our altar service, and that's what it does, and that's okay. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not picking on anybody but myself. Man. That's what the Lord kind of woke me up to with this believing in the power and not denying the power. Lord, I don't want to go through life with a form of godliness. I've been walking through these motions thinking that, well, this is as good as it gets. This is as good as it gets right here, ladies and gentlemen, as good as it gets. No, there's a power that could change them. There's a power that could change them. And you are among the few that have that power. I don't know of how many churches out there that participate in the the freedom and the liberty and allowing God to move and and God meets with them and and communes with them and talks to them and and hands are lifted up and and, uh, they were speaking in uh, new languages. I don't know how many churches are doing that. Don't know. Haven't took a... A poll to see how many. All I know is that this one is. This one's got it. Lucky me. Lucky me. Well, it, it's the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for giving me. You, you, you just. You, uh, what's the word? Born me into it. I just showed up. I didn't even have a choice. It seemed like I was just raised in it. No, I did have a choice. I did have a choice, but thank the Lord he gave me enough faith and strength to choose. At some point in your life, you chose. You chose that, you know what? Man, I feel the power, and I feel it. It's right here. It's in this place. It's in this ministry. It's in this building. I feel it. I'm going to choose to believe it. And maybe that has faded or drifted or, or wavered a little bit from time to time. Maybe that and you know, you know what the Bible says. Those that, uh, that doubt should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Lord, help me right now to not doubt. Not doubt, not in this second, Lord. Not in the next second and not in the second after. And hey, well, Gary, how can you control that? You just keep rebuking and you keep rebuking and you keep rebuking the devil and the, and the lies. That he tells you. I, re- I don't know. I, I'm alone in the car a lot for my work. Just driving. Hours. Ain't that right, Brother Tim? 
hours of driving. Me and him doing the same thing, just driving all across one side of Colorado to the other. I'm in there talking to myself all the time and just rebuking the bad thoughts, rebuking the doubt. Lord, I'm not going to get into a, a, a bad state of mind. I'm going to stay faithful. I'm going to stay there, and that's what it takes. It takes constant there, and then guess what? Over time, it becomes to where it's just like, hey, man, I believe in my what. It doesn't matter what anybody tells me, I believe. I believe in that power. Hey, and I'm not making it up. I'm not, true. I'm not asking you to believe in something that's not real. But I'll tell you what, I feel it. I feel it true and true. I know it 100% to be right. You know, David wasn't called to be something when he ran towards Goliath. It wasn't like he was, he was, he was going to be called to be a king later on. But at that moment, it wasn't like he was carrying all kinds of, of gifts and all kinds of coolness and awesomeness that he was marked as someone great. God knew that he was going to be someone great. But at that moment, he just believed in the power of Jesus' name. That's all it took. So all it takes is a little bit of faith for a last day revival. A little bit, and well, let me add to it. A little bit of constant faith, unwavering faith, undoubtful faith. And we will see, we will see that last day revival. And that's what, uh, you know, I, I'm, every time I've he I heard Brother Hensley twice now, twice in my whole life, I've heard him twice. And I'm convinced and I never met the man, but I'm convinced. Because I can hear the faith, and I could, I never got to experience his fruits. I don't know. I hear, I hear some stories from time to time. But I never shook his hand. You know, when you shake someone's hand, you can kind of get that kind of vibe, like what kind of person that person is, what kind of attitude he's got going on. You know what I'm saying? I never got that. Some of us younger ones maybe never got that. Maybe we were younger. You could hear it. You could hear the fruit of faith over those recordings, amen? You could hear it. And that's the kind of faith that has done, if it's done a lot of things, it's done definitely one thing. It has stirred my faith to say, mm, boy, that's how you believe. That's how you believe. That's how you trust in God. That's how you know that a last day revival is coming. That's how you believe in the power of God like never before. Mm, way to go, Brother Hensley. He's coming back. And I love it. Never met the man, but you could feel it and you could hear it. So, thank the Lord for that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's all stand in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank the Lord. I was actually, uh, actually, I told you I skipped all the way to the end. I was actually working backwards through my notes right there. So, but uh, uh, thank you all for your attention. Hope you stirred your faith enough to realize what kind of power we got in this place.